Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. We're working on our 2019 GMC Sierra Denali. Now last time, we left it in the hands of the painting gnomes after I put my roof skin on. They got the roof all painted up, so now we're gonna change some more parts. I found some stuff I wanted to change and some stuff I definitely needed to change. So we're gonna get all that done, and then we're gonna get it ready for the painting gnomes to come in one last time. Let's get started. A lot of people asked if I make mistakes. Well, yeah, I'm human like everyone else. Even on vehicles I've worked on a million times, I still make mistakes. Got a little ahead of myself. Didn't disconnect the springs before I pulled the bolts out of the hinges. So we're gonna do that now. Kinda made it exciting. I unbolted the hinges in the center where they pivot that way I don't have to realign the hood when I put it back on. Everything would have gone smoothly had I disconnected the springs first. So now that the springs are disconnected, we can set it back down. We'll pull that hinge out of the other side. At least the roaming gnome was a good sport and didn't spend too long laughing at me. So we'll pull our hood out of the way. And we'll unbolt the brace for the fender, because we need to change our fender. I thought there were just a few dents on the outside, but it turns out the whole inside was collapsed. I didn't see it at first, so that's why I didn't order a fender. Once I got into it, you find more damage. So we're going to pull the air box out. We'll disconnect the intake tube and the mass airflow sensor. There's a couple of wiring harnesses that clip to it. We'll pop those off and we'll weasel this thing out of here. Now we'll dig our way to the battery. There's a junction box on top of it. So we'll open that up, disconnect our positive cable and disconnect it. Then we're going to pull off all the wires that go to our junction box. A couple are bolted on, and the rest clip in. We'll screw the nuts back on so we don't lose them, like the manufacturer did. Turns out, I found an extra nut down inside the fender. They must have dropped it when they were assembling it, and just left it in there. Spare parts, free of charge. Slide our battery out. No need to pull the battery hold down because the battery was pushed out of it. Now we can unbolt the overflow bottle, slide it out of there, and just set it off to the side. Start pulling all the wiring harnesses off the battery tray. Quite a few of them. Now we can start unbolting the battery tray, which is also the fender bracket. Bolts the fender to the cowl. So we'll pull the nuts and bolts out of it. There's a wiring harness that runs along the fender, so we're going to unsnap that and get it out of the way. And now we can pull our brace slash battery tray out. It's kind of wedged in there because the fender is collapsed and it's kind of pinching it in there. With a little struggle, we'll get it out of there. Find a place for this wiring harness and continue disconnecting the rest of it from our fender. Now we can unbolt the plate that the air box sits on. It's also the front fender brace. There's a little bracket up in the front. Pull a couple bolts out of that.
unbolt the front of the fender from the radiator support. And there's our couple bolts inside the door. Pull those out. And of course, no bolts in the bottom of the fender since GM deemed them unnecessary in an effort to save a few ounces of weight on a truck that weighs a little over 8,000 pounds. Now you can pull out the last two bolts that are on top through the hood hinge. And our fender's ready to come off. Okay, so there's one wire I missed. Pull that out of there. Now our fender's ready to come off. So now we're gonna pull out the insulation on the side here. The antenna wire goes over it. And it's got two-sided tape on it that holds it on. We need to pull this out because where the tire went back, it kind of messed up the cowl a little bit. It broke some of the seam sealer and pushed the cowl out a little bit. So we're gonna have to push it back forward and paint it all up and put new seam sealer on there. So we're gonna get everything out of the way, pound out that cowl a little bit, and turn it over to the painting gnomes to paint it all up after we seam seal it. It appears someone's been doing burnouts on the firewall. Those darn kids and their hot rods. So while our painting gnome is painting up our cowl and our fender, I'm gonna start putting together our antenna. This was the original one that was painted. I just took it apart so we could paint the outside and not have to worry about the gasket on the bottom. So now I'm gonna put it back together. It's just a few screws that go in the bottom. But I don't wanna waste any time while he's working. So I found something else to do. Now our paint still isn't dry for our fender, so we can't work on it just yet. Now we're gonna get on to changing our gearbox. So first we need to unbolt the air tube. It's gonna be in our way. Pull it off the intercooler, set it off to the side. That's all you really need to be able to get to everything on top of the gearbox. It is kind of hard to weasel it out of there. So now we'll unbolt the pitman arm. Stick our pickle fork in there and knock it apart. We don't care if we mess up the boot. I'm getting a new pitman arm because, well, it's a GMHD truck. You know it's no good, even with only 12,000 miles. They come like that from the factory. So we'll unbolt the steering shaft. It's nice working on brand new vehicles. Everything comes apart nicely. So we'll slide the steering shaft off. Pull the clamp off for the return hose. Wiggle the return hose off. Yeah, I was not expecting any pressure in there. There shouldn't be any. Now we can break the pressure line loose and spin it off by hand. Something not usually possible in Illinois. Pull the line out of there. Now we'll unbolt our gearbox from the frame rail. We'll unbolt our idler arm from the other side. 
We need to drop the center link down. It won't go down far enough for us to get the gearbox out. Now we need to drop the sway bar down because our gearbox isn't gonna fit out the hole that's in the frame without dropping this down just a little bit. Pull our gearbox out. Well, our truck has given birth to a 30 pound baby gearbox. We'll let it determine its own gender. Our new gearbox didn't come with a module, so we're just gonna swap it over. I did get a brand new pitman arm that I had already installed because, well, it's a GM and you know it came standard with a bad pitman arm. So I'll bolt our module onto our used gearbox, plug it in. We'll pull the line out for our return hose, put it back in. The used one was damaged, probably in shipping. So our gearbox is ready to go back up in there. It's a little heavy and awkward. But once it's in there, it ain't coming out. get up into place. We'll put our bolts in the side of it, screw them in a little bit, and we'll tighten them down. Manufacturer specs. Three Ugga Duggas. Slide our steering shaft on and tighten it up. Click. Put our pressure line back in there. Screw it in by hand, start the threads because we can. And then tighten it down to manufacturer specs, of course. Put our return line on, slide the clamp down. sure it's on there not coming off and we put our air tube back in I only took it out for video purposes although it did make it easier to get around in there it doesn't go in that easy so after playing Tetris we got it back into place Slide the front back on the intercooler. And we put our sway bar back up. We didn't take the links off, just let it hang on the links. Run the bolts back into the frame. Click, 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 click. Now we can tighten up the idler arm. Believe it or not, this one wasn't bad. I thought this truck was loaded. It didn't even come with the standard worn out idler arm. So we can tighten up our pitman arm and our paint's dry. So we can start putting our fender back together. We'll put the J-nuts on with our J-nut installation tool. A couple rubber caps in the front and one clip for the headlight. Now we can stick our fender up there. Should be pretty easy to align. Our gaps were all right before, so we're just putting it right back where it was. Might even get it in one shot. Don't ask me why this fender was black and the other one was olive. They both are brand new GM fenders. I guess one was primed on a Tuesday and one was primed on a Friday. I'm not too worried because hopefully they'll both end up being the same color white. Better be nice to the painting, though. 
So we'll start all our bolts by hand. Now we can start tightening everything up. Time to set the hood down on there. Hopefully, it's already pre-aligned. We'll find out. So we'll start our bolt in the driver's side. While I was putting the gearbox in, the bodywork gnome fixed some of the dings on the hood and primed them up. The dealer did knock off quite a bit of money for all the little damage that was on it. So that ended up saving me a few more bucks. Uh, hood won't go back. We need to open up a little bit. It was on the other side of the latch. I'm going to tighten up our bolts and see how our hood fits. Nice. First time. Now we'll put these springs on. I've been told you have to take these off before you take the hood hinges off. Up a little bit. They are collared, so you do have to make sure they're centered. If you tighten it up and the collar pinches the spring, it won't seat. So you gotta make sure it's centered. Tighten up our little bracket on the bottom. And we can start putting the inside together. Clip our wiring harness into our fender. And drop our battery tray in. It's a bit easier to put the tray in when the fender isn't twisted like a pretzel. Start all the nuts and bolts on it. And torque them down to manufacturer specs with our impact that identifies as a torque wrench. Now we can set our overflow bottle back down in there. Plug in the low coolant sensor and slide the bottle back in. is easier said than done. Bolt it back in. Find a place for our wires, jam them off to the side, make a little opening so we can stick our battery back in there. Slide the battery in. Bolt the battery down. Put the positive terminal, which is part of this junction box, back on. Tighten that up. Start plugging in all our positive terminals. Couple of the clip in there. And the ones that bolt on. Tighten those down. Snap our little cap on. Route our negative cable over there. Kind of forgot about it. Goes underneath all this stuff, comes out the other side. We're gonna leave it disconnected for now. We don't need any light shows. We drop our mounting plate in for our air box, which is also the front fender support. Start our bolts by hand. 
and run them down in there with our electric torque wrench. Not ready to drop our airbox in. Slide the outside in. Push the wiring harness out. We'll get the intake tube on there. Clip it down into place. Plug the wiring harnesses in. Plug in our mass airflow sensor and tighten up our intake tube. Now you can put our support in. Goes to the cowl. Slides in there. Bolt on each end. And we'll tighten it down. Now it's time to prep our truck so the painting gnomes can do their job. Pull off all of our name plates. I did make a template, so I will know where to put them back on. Take off our body side molding. And we'll use our magic eraser, get the rest of the two-sided tape off. These are available in my Amazon store. Makes life much easier. Saves a lot of fingers. That's how we did it back in the old days. Now we're also going to paint the front door on the passenger side. Since we're painting the fender, we need to blend into the door or it's never going to match. So that's why we're painting this. There's no damage on it at all. We're also going to paint the rear door on the driver's side for the exact same reason. Our front door had some damage on it, and it is all the way at the back, so in order for us to paint it and blend it, we need some extra space, so we have to blend into the rear door. So I left the bodywork gnome to do some bodywork and thought he was working hard. It appears that he was filming me replying to your comments, so yeah, sometimes I take a break. Turns out fender boxes make nice couches. So now it's time to put everything back together because our roof is painted. So we'll snap our wiring harness in. We'll put in the driver's side curtain airbag. Bolt it all in there. Snap in whatever Christmas trees are in there. Drop the antenna in that we put together earlier. There's one little plastic clip. Goes up first. And there's a little metal retainer. Goes over the outside, that's what actually holds it down. And then there's a bolt that goes through the center. That little metal retainer was completely destroyed from the original truck. So when I bought my used roof, I got that. Another bonus to a used roof. Plug in our antenna. And now we're ready to put our sunroof assembly up. There's a couple of alignment tabs. And a couple of the bolts stay in there so you can line everything up. We'll start the rest of them. I wasn't in the mood for a sunroof yoga session, so I had the gnome help me. He stopped roaming for a while. Tighten it all down. Or up. Whatever. And we'll connect our drain tubes. And now we're going to start pulling our doors apart, getting this thing ready for paint. 
pull the rear door panel off. Couple screws inside the grab handle, one inside the door handle. A couple on the bottom. That snaps out of there. Disconnect the window switch and the door handle. And our door panel's off. Pull the gasket off around the top. Unbolt the front of the belt molding. And we'll unscrew our door handle cap. Pull the little door handle cap off. And pull our door handle off. Pull the belt molding off. Hopefully without breaking it. Now do the right front door. Pull the little cap out behind the door handle. Pull the cap out behind the grab handle. Pull the bolts out of both of those. Couple across the bottom. Pull the door panel off. And completely forget there's one more bolt in there. Because I haven't done enough of these, I guess. So now we're going to pull this trim panel off so we can get to the other bolt. Because this rookie totally forgot about it. So now it's out. Now we can disconnect the door handle and disconnect our wiring harness. And now our door panel is free. Now I'll pull the trim across the top off. A couple Christmas trees and then it just clips into the pinch weld across the top. Pull the cap off for the outside door handle. Unscrew our belt molding. Start disconnecting our mirror wires. And unbolt the mirror. Pull the mirror off of there. Pull the wires out. Lift our belt molding off. And unbolt our cap for the outside door handle. Pull the cap off, pull the handle off, and pull the little gasket out. Now onto the driver's door. Pull all our little caps off. I don't know if you know this, but there's a hidden screw underneath this trim panel. I just learned about it myself. So we'll unbolt that, pull the rest of our screws out. I'm just throwing everything inside the door panel. I keep them upright, keeps all the screws with the door panel. I know what goes to this door. And if you knock the door panel over, well, you're playing hide and go seek and you may or may not have all the bolts. It's a risk you take. We'll pull our speaker out of the way. We'll fish our door check out of there that fell in like two videos ago. We'll route it back in there and bolt it back in. We'll do this now because otherwise I'm going to forget and I'm going to wonder where that rattle is coming from. Snap our speaker back in there. Bolt it back in. Pull the cap off for our outside handle and unscrew that. Bet you thought I was going to cavity wax that door seam. Ha! You don't know me as well as you think you do. So now we'll pull that cover down across the top, unbolt our mirror, or at least what's left of our mirror. In the pile, pull the window channel out of there.
and we need to pull the gasket off that goes around the door. These clips like to break, so I just leave the clips in and pull the gasket off. You pull down on one side, pull out a little bit, and then lift up. They're shaped like a T, so you're basically just trying to get them off of there. Once the rubber piece is off, sometimes you can get a screwdriver in there, or a little pick, and you can disconnect the tabs, put those clips back in the gasket, or you just put the gasket back on the same way I took it off. Or if you're rich or working for an insurance company, you just break them all and replace them. I'm not doing either, so I'm saving them. Pull the cap off, pull our handle out of there, and now it's time to do the painting gnome's job because I don't mind this part. So we're gonna sand the back door. Since we're only blending it, we're gonna use our sand fix, which is basically just paste with sand in it. Use a gray scuff pad. It's pretty easy. It goes pretty quick. And I don't mind it, so I'm gonna do it. Save the painting gnomes a little trouble. We're gonna do this on all the parts we're blending, which are basically the driver's side rear door and the passenger side front door. Everything else is gonna have to be block sanded with actual sandpaper. And uh, yeah, I'm not into all that, so I'll let the gnomes do that. Cause, well, I hate that job and they like it. So I went around the edge with tape so I don't sand the panels next to it. And just kind of go along, sand everything. It was pretty quick. Rinse it off, make sure you didn't miss anything. Go over it again if you have to. But now it's time to turn it over to the painting gnomes. So our truck is all stripped down and parts of it are even sanded for the painting gnomes. Now they're gonna come in and do their part, then I can throw it all back together next time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.